What I'm going to talk about today uh, are seven kind of marketing hacks or tactics that are working really well for us and for our clients uh, on the single grain side. And um, yeah, just take one of them. You don't need to take all seven. Just try to keep it simple. We're going to actually make all the recordings free for everyone, so you can check this out afterwards. Um, I tend to talk fast, um, so bear with me. And um, without further ado, we are going to talk about the seven proven marketing hacks uh, that are working for us for 2019. So uh, first and foremost, um, hopefully most of you listen to the podcast, but uh, I'm Eric Sue, and uh, I have an agency called Single Grain, and then I also have a software called ClickFlow, um, it's marketing analytics software, and I do a podcast called Growth Everywhere, it's where I interview entrepreneurs, that's every single week, and then marketing school obviously is with Neil every single day. Um, so basically, that little thing you saw with um, Syed myself, that was basically a uh, Growth Everywhere interview, and we're probably going to put that on the podcast. So um, when I think about marketing right now, the way people do marketing, it's kind of like people are very like, oh, if I do paid advertising, like, you know, paid advertising is like the thing. Like, I don't talk about anything else, right? So, you know, we get on this, this hamster wheel, the paid advertising hamster wheel. Or when we do SEO, we hire a bunch of people from the Philippines or whatever, wherever, and then we're paying like $5 per article, maybe $10 per link or something like that. Um, but the results aren't great, right? So we silo ourselves into these different hamster wheels and uh, when we think about marketing, it doesn't work that well. Like if you look at what Sayed's doing right now, he's talking acquisitions, he's talking partnerships, he's talking SEO, he's, they're, they're doing paid as well. It's the whole enchilada. And if you listen to marketing school, we're also just talking about omni-channel marketing all the time. Like when you look at what Neil does, it's podcasts, email, blog, some, some paid traffic, and then partnership stuff, right? So how do you combine all the stuff that you're doing from a marketing perspective and make it into one whole, uh, well, not the little hamster wheels. You, maybe you want a big hamster wheel, not the little hamster wheels, right? So the first thing I want to talk about here is uh, content MVP. So um, Syed was basically just talking about, hey, look, I've got content teams for uh, WP Beginner, often Monster, like five blog posts a week, three blog posts a week. Um, but how do you produce content at scale and really take advantage of it, right? So if you produce a piece of content, instead of spending a couple hundred dollars for each piece, um, our friend, this came from the mastermind actually, Eric Rivera, he came up with this concept of content MVP. So how many of you have read the, the Lean Startup? Eric Reese. Cool, so a handful of you, right? Um, so you know, MVP, minimum, minimum viable product, how do you take that concept and apply it to content? So instead of producing a two to 4,000 word piece of content, spending a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars on it, instead what you do, is you produce a smaller piece of content. Um, so we all know that content, um, you know, the, the top performing pieces are all around 2,000 words or so, right? That's kind of what we've been doing. Um, if you look at what um, the other blogs have been doing, you know, the people that are most successful, if you're producing, if you have more words in your piece of content, what's gonna happen is a piece of content can rank for hundreds or thousands of keywords instead of just a handful. So right here, this study was done by our mutual friend, uh, Backlinko, and um, he's got a lot of data that he's sharing. He's actually doing a study with us around um, click-through rate data, and we're gonna, that's actually coming out on his blog in a couple months, so that's a little bonus for you guys. Um, now over here, this one also came from Backlinko, um, but long-form content generates more backlinks. And, I talk about this all the time on the podcast. What's the two most important things for us from, SEO, uh, from an SEO standpoint? Content and links. A lot of people forget about the links. Like, oh yeah, we've tried content marketing, but we forget about the links, right? The longer your content, the more links you're gonna get. That's just proven. Um, and this is, this is data that he's pulled from multiple kind of SEO tools and um, you know, data that he has already. Now, you know, a lot of people say, okay, you know, I, don't have to, I don't have time for this, and this is what, where content MVP is coming, right? People, I don't have time, I don't have time, you know, I'm busy managing this, busy, busy managing that. So for us, this is marketing school. And Neil and I will sit in a room, we'll record, and you know, we get the show notes for it. So the show notes right here, you can see it's really simple. It's not even long form content. This is an MVP. And right here, this, I don't even, maybe this is like 200 words or so. It's not that many words, but it automatically will publish to our blog. So literally what Neil and I do is we will record, we'll put it into Dropbox or Google Drive, wherever we put it, and then um, magically we'll have our show notes people jump on it, and then these show notes will appear on marketingschool.io. Um, and then sometimes we'll transcribe them as well. Maybe we're not doing it because Neil and I are cheap. Um, so maybe we're not doing this anymore. So, um, but the cool thing here is when we pull this up in Hrefs, do I have a laser pointer? Uh, I don't know how to use my laser pointer. But anyway, right here on the right side, you can see we're, we're raking for YouTube hacks. Like this little, little 200 word piece is ranking for YouTube hacks. So now instead of saying, 
instead of saying I need to write a 2,000 word post, I can just look at what is starting to rank, what has maybe over 2,000 searches a month. This one has 2,200. And the rank for it, if I'm ranking anywhere from number five to number 30 in Google, I'm within striking distance of getting a top five ranking. Um, because then I, could, I just need to upgrade it, and then I just need to build a couple links. Boom, then I'm, then I'm ranking for that, right? Um, now the question is, do I want to rank for that? So content MVPs, you can go to, you know, Neil and I, we talk about ProBlogger. You can go to ProBlogger. You can go to other sites too. Hire these writers and just write maybe four or 500 word pieces. And if they start to take off, maybe after a 30, 60, 90 day period, you can upgrade it and then you can build some links towards it and they just keep rinsing and repeating. And this is literally what Eric does um, with his blogs, which get uh, you know, over, over a million visits uh, per month, maybe even over two million visits a month. Uh, now, right here, we're, so here's a framework you can use. So you can start with 1,000 words or 500 words, go to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 words, et cetera. And then what happens is you'll do something like this. So you know, literally, Saeed was just talking about this. Um, I think a recent episode of Marketing School, we also talked about not enough people think about upgrading content. Now, this piece over here, I think it started at about maybe 1,000 or 2,000 visits a month. Now it's at 20,000 visits a month, and it's continuing to go up because we'll add like a paragraph or two every couple of months or maybe every half a year or so, and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you think about Wikipedia or Yelp or uh, TripAdvisor, user-generated content, right? People keep upgrading the content over and over and over. It's keep getting, it keeps getting refreshed. Now, most of us here don't have that luxury, but we can upgrade. We can, I think um, there are people, even at HubSpot, they hire full-time people on their staff just to upgrade content. That's how important it is. People don't spend enough time on this, um, maybe because it's unsexy. People like the new stuff all the time. People spend too much on acquisition. And I think just writing new content all the time, you're, you're overspending on acquisition, and you're not focusing on making the most of what you have. So that's the first part, content MVPs. And Ahrefs now, um, our favorite SEO tool, Ahrefs actually allows you, they have a content explorer, and you can see, I'm, I'm looking at Ahrefs' blog over here, but I can look at the times that they're publishing new content, and I can see how often they're republishing their content. So now I can look into people's strategies. So I can look at Syed's strategies, I can look at Neil's strategies, um, and I can just pay Ahrefs, I don't know, $99 a month or $179 a month, 14-day free trial, not affiliated, but um, it's over here. Ahrefs, check it out, um, it works out well. Now you can look into what people are doing. You can even look at the average length of content that they're putting out there, and you get an idea of what they're doing uh, from a blogging standpoint. <clears throat> cool. So the second thing is this. When we do a marketing school podcast, it's you know, Neil and I, like we spend uh, maybe two to three hours together, um, and then we do it maybe two or three times a month, depending on travel schedules. Now, the thing is, that takes a lot of effort, especially when he drives over or when I drive over to Culver City or when he drives over to downtown LA. It's a lot of time that's spent even sitting in traffic. So when we think about a, a uh, podcast that we produce, it, it can actually become much more than that, right? So, and I'm, I'm assuming a good amount of us here follow Gary Vee, yes? Cool. So um, Gary Vee actually has a process too, but even before I go into that process, um, here's the thing that's happening with Google right now. If you produce a blog post, this is a recent study um, with collaboration with uh, Rand Fishkin and um, with, of SparkToral with a jump shot, the number of um, zero click searches are going up, meaning that when you land on a search result page so, or a SERP, the problem right now is that most people aren't clicking anymore because Google is you know, adding, you know, here's the answer, right? You, you no longer need to click on something. Um, and this black part over here is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and that, you know, there's this whole thing, Rand's got a rant, Rand's got a rant about uh, Google um, driving more clicks to their own, bless you, to their, own, to their own properties. And that's a problem in itself. But let's just talk about what this means for us right now. So zero click searches are growing. And over here, all you need to know, if I had a laser pointer, but you can see it's going up um, and to the right. So what do you have to do for yourself? You kind of have to CYA, cover your own asses, right? So um, Google click throughs, you can see the blue part is what we want. That's the organic searches. Um, so organic click percentage, that's shrinking. And you can see actually the red part for the paid clicks, um, which is where Google makes its money, that is actually growing. It's, it's growing very slightly, but you can see that. So you kind of have to, like, if you're just doing blog posts, you have to defend yourself. Um, if you're going to do a blog post, how do you make the most of it, right? Like, if we do a podcast, how do we make the most of it? Um, and we've talked about this a couple of times. So, you know, people, oh, I don't have the time for this. So what we do is we do something called content sprouting. And then we might take a video. So our YouTube channel, I think, has two to three new videos per week. And we'll start with the video first, because a video automatically becomes an audio file, right? So video, audio. And then we can convert, let's say I do like a, my talk right now, this talk can become maybe three or four podcast episodes, right? And so I can go from one, one video piece of content, automatically I have 
uh, three uh, podcast pieces of content. And then from there, I have like 50 to 60% of a blog post. So I can just have a writer on my team take on the blog post, maybe write a 500 word or a thousand word piece, see if it ranks and then upgrade it. And then we got to think about promotion too. So we, we do seed, sprout, pollinate is a promotion portion. And then the very bottom, it's monetization, right? So harvesting. So we produce a ton of content. We rank for a lot of different things. I think we rank for podcast advertising, ad networks, things like that. Um, and I was actually talking to Mr. Affiliate Master Syed about this. And he's like, dude, you should think about like how you can like affiliatize those or monetize those better. And um, you know, most people don't think about how they can monetize the traffic that they're bringing. And um, that's good traffic, right? I think, I think for the, the podcast advertising one, um, I think for this year, we'll at least collect 30 to 36 grand on it. It's not bad. We can probably do more with it, but at least that's some cash flow um, that we otherwise wouldn't have gotten. And now we just take that 36 grand and apply it to our salaries and hire more people. Um, so this is content sprouting right here. It's how do you make the most of what you have? This is what Gary Vee does too, because he has a videographer that follows him all around the whole day. And um, sometimes it might be like a 15 hour session. And then you know, all that might become like you know, separate audio clips. It goes into podcasts. And then um, one guy that used to work at Single Grain now is his copywriter. Um, and so he, he will convert it into long form content. Um, I think when he used to work for us, uh, Eric, what was he writing, like 8,000 words a day? Something like that. Yeah, so he was writing like four to 8,000 words a day. He's just a machine. And now he's, he's with Gary Vee. And he actually gave me his content process um, just to, um, and actually, I think Gary Vee has actually shared it uh, on SlideShare. So you can pick it up, just type in Gary Vee content process. Um, and it's, it's very similar to something like this. But it's literally taking what you have, right? You don't just um, buy a car and drive it off the street and just don't drive it again. You make the most of it, you do content sprouting. So um, the other thing I want to talk about here, this is the third thing, is um, pre-post page testing, so title meta description testing. Um, if we're producing content at all, Again, how do we make the most of what we have, right? So you know, you have option A over here, it's marketing blog, and then option B. So option A is marketing blog, option B is best marketing blog, latest strategies and tips. So how many of you would actually click the first one? And then the second one? Right, so, right, so better title, obviously. So how do, how do we actually put this into practice? How do we make the most of what we have already? So you can do something like this, right? You can go to your Google search console, it's free, right? And then right here, you can just make a simple Google Sheet. You can just say, okay, here's the old title, here's the new title, here's the old meta description, here's the new one. Here's when you, te when you, when you, run it, you start started running a new test. Here's when you ended the test date. And then maybe you have some notes over here. The new title performed way better. That was our hypothesis in the first place. Um, and then the results are a 300% increase in our click-through rate. So you know, if, I'm, uh, if, I'm, if I'm somebody, maybe I run like, I don't know, like a food blog or something, I might have this um, chili recipe that gets um, 100,000 clicks a month. But if I can increase the click-through rate a little bit, maybe 20% or so, great, that's an additional 20,000 visits per, per month. What does that mean for my business? How much is each visitor worth? Um, so if I can do something like this, pre-post testing, which is looking at before and after, this is, if you have someone manage this maybe once a month or once every uh, quarter or so, that's money in the bank for you, right? Because you're optimizing, you're making the most of what you have. Um, so that's one thing you can do. So, oh, I, don't have time. I don't have time for this, right? So, if you don't have time for this, this is the only time I'm going to talk about my own thing. This is ClickFlow right here. You can use this. Save time, save, save time with it. Um, you can email me. Maybe I'll hook you up. Um, but you can do something like this where it'll save you a lot of time. Now, the other thing right here, um, Neil and I talk about this quite a bit, is a product-led growth. And this is actually, um, this term, this phrase came from OpenView Ventures. Uh, so venture firm and um, I think it was Ashley Montague that came up with this. And the concept around product-led growth is this. So if we look at what Neil's done with Uber Suggest, um, he bought a tool, right? So the story behind this is um, I had a senior living, senior living website, and I bought a site for like, like 11 grand or something, and I got the rankings from that, just redirected the traffic. And then so a week later, he, he ends up buying this. He's like, oh, yeah, I just spent $250,000 on Uber Suggest, right? So that, it was from that. And like, so Uber Suggest, what he did was he bought it, but he didn't just buy it, he made it better. So if you actually, if you're looking for like a free SEO tool right now, Uber suggests you just log in. Um, you get a lot of different inf information. You can look at your, um, you can look at your competitors. You can look at yourself. Uh, you can look at the keyword volume. All these different things that you can do, and it's completely free. Um, and I'll let him kind of talk about this in, in, in a little bit. But if you think about this, instead of charging people for Uber suggests, when you have a really good tool, what's going to happen? 
to me, this is a better form of content marketing because it's harder to build a product, much harder to build a product. And it, this is defensible too. A lot of people are going to link to it. He's going to build domain authority across the board, which means whatever piece of content that he publishes will rank better because this right here is driving a lot of the links coming to, to the website. A lot of people are using it. Sure, he's spending a lot of money on bandwidth, et cetera. But when you do something like this, when you think about what HubSpot has done, um, so HubSpot CRM, um, I remember talking to the um, HubSpot APAC director uh, a couple weeks ago when I was in Hong Kong, and we were actually talking about how they made the switch from requiring people to pay to um, basically being a freemium version, which is product-led growth, right? You're leading with your product. So what he said was about 99% of the company was against making that switch to freemium. But the executive team decided that this is what we're going to do anyway. They made the switch. And boom, like all of a sudden, like massive change and everything started to grow a lot faster. And that's one of those risks that you might have to take. You know, Neil took a risk by buying this thing and deciding not to charge for it, instead making it free. And now this is, this is quickly overtaking some of the best SEO tools out there because it's free, right? It's, it's the option, you know, free, you know, if you're cheap Asians like, you know, Syed, myself, or Yaniv, maybe not Yaniv, Yaniv's not cheap. Um, Neil's cheap. Um, so you want to do something like this. Um, and so he's not even listening anyway. So here's one thing you can do. There's a site over here called 1kprojects.com. There's a lot of developers that build things, and they just throw them away, right? So you can go here. You can go buy a project for less than $1,000, maybe like something that is, if something's marketing related, I might just go buy it, right? So you go to 1kprojects.com, and you can, you can pick it up from a developer. What I would do is I might even tell the developer, if you don't have a technical co-founder, hey, um, how about I give you a little upside? You continue to work on this a little bit. But 1kprojects.com, I forgot how I heard about this. But um, yeah, if you don't have the time, you go do something like this, right? We all talk about we don't have enough time. So 1kprojects.com, actually, this should have came before that, but whatever. Um, if you don't have time for it, where you can hire people, um, you'll have these slides afterwards, and you have the recording too. So Upwork is one. TopTal, if you want the top 3% of developers, I've actually used them a couple times. Uh, Dribble and Behance for top designers. And Dribble actually has a talent management program right now where they'll actually source talent for you. And there's a lot of talent that I see on there that they're actually directors at big companies um, because I'm looking at potentially hiring designers for you know, the software side or you know, maybe somewhere, uh, somewhere else in the future. So Dribble or Behance for designers, and you can reach out to them. You'll pay a typical recruiter's fee, maybe I think a little less, maybe 10%, uh, but that's where you can go higher. And in tools, if you don't have time to go to 1K projects to buy something, you can use something like outgrow.co. Um, outgrow will allow you to embed uh, widgets, like calculators on your website. Um, let's say you're running a finance blog, you can make a, you can make a, you can make a widget with Outgrow. You can also use uh, lead quizzes as well if you want to use quizzes. So if I'm like, if I run like a diet website, maybe I want to have something like how healthy are you? Maybe that's the, the, the question. Um, and then I can just have that as a pop-up. So lead quizzes. And then um, Privy is something we've talked about on the podcast a while back. So Privy is just like a spinning wheel. You can run like a contest. Um, and then I think my conversion rates were about 3 to 4% or so. I think um, if you're in B to C, your conversion rates might be anywhere from 15 to 20%. Um, so Privy, I think it's like $30 a month or something. We didn't even use it right now, and I think we still pay for it. Probably should cancel it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been really good when we did use it. So um, that's now we're on to number five. And uh, now I want to talk about customer data platform. So how many of you use a customer data platform, like segments, anything like that? One person. OK, cool. So this is fairly new still. Um, customer data platforms, a lot of people um, in the growth, uh, the growth community are talking about this. And uh, we've been experimenting with this for a couple months. So what we use is we use a CDP, customer data platform, called hull.io, so H-U-L-L uh, .io. And you can see here, when I land on their home page, it automatically shows our, um, our logo. And it shows like, you know, blah, blah, blah at singlebrain.com. So there's a little personalization that's going on. So a lot of people are doing personalization right now. Everyone's kind of that, like, that's the new hot thing right now. Um, they kind of allow you to do that. They allow you to make the most of the data that you have coming to your site. And then you can figure out what you want to do with them afterwards. And I'll give you some examples. So for us, we get um, overall visits, not uniques, about 250,000 visits a month. I think about 180,000 uniques or so. Um, but the cool thing is, because we're publishing so much marketing content, a lot of people are landing on our, on our, um, on our site. So NetJets, um, we, can, we can see uh, BlackRock, huge investment firm. Um, a lot of these companies, I think, um, I think about, God, there's AT&T, there's like 3M. There's a lot of these companies landing on our site. And what we're doing right now, 
well, there's Nike, there's Bloomberg. What we're doing is we'll automatically, if two IP addresses from Nike land on our site, we will automatically load them. We'll find four people on their marketing team, um, and then we'll load them into an account-based marketing sequence, meaning we'll target four people from their team, and we'll automatically dump them into an outreach sequence, right? And my outreach sequence is how do I add value, right? So it's like, oh, would you like us to do a private webinar with you, or would you guys like to be on our podcast, right? Versus saying, you know, come check out my stuff, right? So. We'll do something like this if we find that two people from the same company have, in fact, landed on our site. Um, and this happens automatically now without somebody, somebody needing to do it um, manually. And the thing with this now is I'm, giving, I'm dangling a carrot in front of them versus saying, hey, like, check out my product. So this is hard to see, I know. Um, but we've basically bucketed a couple of pages on our site. So you know, whoever lands on our ClickFlow pricing page, um, there's like a small segment. Whoever lands on our um, SEO techniques page, we'll bucket them into a segment. And then whoever has um, over 10 million in revenue um, has an Alexa score of less than 200,000, which means they get good traffic, they get good revenue. Um, we'll automatically load them into a sequence here. And whoever submits a form, we'll load them in here too. So then we'll just then we'll figure out how to bucket them, right? So right now we have a lot of this data coming in, and I just like I've I've set this up. Up, but I haven't had the time to. Um, it, it's starting to work, but now we actually find that we're, we're finding that we need to hire someone to actually manage this so we can uncover more um, sales opportunities. I'll tell you, um, we did book a meeting with um, a large online education company, and then we just dumped them into a sequence like this, and they said, sure, let's do it. And I think a couple more people responded. I just didn't respond to them um, just because there's, uh, there's a lot of other stuff to do. So here, what you can do is, when I talk about account-based marketing, what we can do with the data that we have is, um, I'll read it to you guys. So it says, hi, Kristen. My name is Eric Sue, and I'm one of the co-founders of ClickFlow and SingleGrain. Thanks for visiting one of our properties from Burbank. It's kind of creepy. Um, and I saw on your website that you're using a CDN, Content Delivery Network, and your Alexa Global rank is 4152, right? So it's a little personalized. Um, this, by the way, I threw this, um, we threw this outreach away, but I'm just showing you the level of personalization. The response rate wasn't that good on this. When we started saying, hey, want to get on our podcast or um, want to do a pr private webinar, our response rate started jumping up to about 8 to 10% or so. This is only like, like 2%, 3%. So people aren't that interested in saying, uh, have you done any type of SUAB testing, right? Uh, clearly, I'm about to sell you something. Um, so what you want to do with a customer data platform, what you can do is, is if you have a sales team, and how many of you have a sales team? Like, uh, like 10, 15 people. Okay, so those of you that have a sales team, you want to focus, you want their time focused on, well, the right leads, right? So sales rep nurture on a good fit trial signup, you put them in there. Um, now, if it's an automated nurture sequence, great. You don't put your salespeople on that. You want them focusing on the big opportunities because salespeople, their time is finite, right? We have the same eight hours each day. So you want them to focus on the right things, doing the right things, doing the right things at the right time. Um, now, the other thing too is you can see in the red stars, you have cold email list, newsletter subscribers, trial signups. These are kind of the, the ones that are like not, not the ones you want your salespeople to focus on, right? Qualified leads, these are the ones you want your salespeople to focus on. So we, what we've been doing is we, we're saving everyone time by saying, okay, focus on these, forget about the rest um, based on you know, the, the, the filtering that we're doing. And you can do a lot of that um, with a customer data platform like uh, whole.io, and there's a lot of other ones out there. Um, what else do we do with it? So, we talk about cold, automated account-based marketing. That's the thing that I just showed you with uh, outreach. And then we talked about the middle of the funnel. Um, we didn't talk about this. So middle of the funnel, targeting, using outreach. So what we do here is if they actually opt into our list, so they're warm now. It's not just someone that's cold. If they're warm, and let's say um, Eric from Pew Pew Tactical opts in, and I say, OK, well, you know what? I think we work with those, those companies. Why don't I re reach out to him? Because I saw that he visited our page on SEO techniques and one, one on podcast advertising. So what I can do is, or one of my salespeople can do, is we can say, OK, let's reach out to Eric. We notice, Eric, you visited podcast advertising, SEO techniques. Let's send him more content around that and tell him that we noticed that he visited. Um, and let's continue to nurture that, right? Versus saying, come buy our stuff, come buy our stuff. When's a good time for a call? Like, nobody wants to get on a call with you, right? So just continue to add value, and they'll raise their hand when the time is right. Um, it's kind of similar to this. I mean, like, you know, people, like, we decided to do a live event. Like, we want to see who would raise their hand, who's qualified for it. Um, and then we reach out to the right people, and then you guys are here. So middle of the funnel, targeting outreach, um, and you can do something like that. And then the one before, this is cold, right? So we're reaching out. If two random IP addresses visit, then we're just going to hit up the people, find four IP, or find uh, four marketing executives, reach out to them cold. Um, and then if somebody opts into our list and we find the pieces of content that they visited and we can add more value, 
we're going to do something like this. And then C, I was going to say number C, but letter C, dynamic retargeting. So if Coca-Cola visits our site, what we can do is we can automatically pull up a Coca-Cola logo. And then what we can do from there is we can say, hey, look, we help companies like Coca-Cola. Um, we can load them into like a Facebook custom audience and then just start dynamically retargeting them based on um, the behavior that they have on, they've had on our site. Um, so you can do dynamic retargeting. Um, beware, we haven't tested this yet. Um, so um, test at your own. Um, I can't find the word right now, but it's your own risk. So that's number five. And then number six. Uh, number six is chat. So look. Larry just talked about Mobile Monkey. He talked about how Facebook chat um, is, is basically taking in Instagram now, WhatsApp, and obviously Facebook Messenger is a part of the equation. Um, but also, chat still works on our own sites too. So what we do with Intercom on our on the ClickFlow site is when people visit our pricing page, what we'll do is we'll automatically qualify the people, right? So we'll say, okay, you know, is your traffic below fifty thousand, above fifty thousand, less than fifty thousand, um, less than ten thousand, and then we'll we'll ask for information, and then we'll automatically start to segment them into different buckets. From here, we've gotten a really uh, good size, well, I'd say mid-market sized account just by filling this out, right? And nobody needs to be there. I think the, the lead actually came in at like 2 a.m. when my co-founder and I were sleeping. Um, so you know, this, this works out really well for us from a lead qualification standpoint. But they actually added product tours as well. So now I've paid for product tour uh, tools out there. I'm not going to name any. But now I can just set something up automatically using Intercom because they have product tools in there or product tours in there. So if we're doing SaaS, perfect. If we have any type of login experience like a membership site, Great, we can, we can guide people around because onboarding, when you're doing any type of SaaS or recurring business, um, you have to onboard people really well because that's where you usually lose people. If they don't know how to use your product, you have failed them. So you have to have some type of product tour uh, mechanism in there and Intercom has it built in, so that's what we use for, for ClickFlow. Um, and it works very well with Slack as well. So I think this came in earlier this week. Um, so one guy's like, we need a content audio audit um, on our site. Please send me info on how ClickFlow can get the job done for us. So here's the cool thing, right? We talked about partnerships between different things that are working. ClickFlow, we're not a service company, but what we can do here is we can position it as a managed service company where we say, hey, you know what? We'll refer the leads to another agency, maybe single grain, whatever, um, because ClickFlow doesn't do content audits, right? But guess what's happening right now? This is product-led growth because people are coming into this. Right now we, have a free, we, we are planning to have maybe a freemium version coming out, um, but when you do something like this, people are gonna come in, they're gonna start to ask for other things. We, like two weeks ago, we added a button to our, our product and we said, uh, get managed services. And someone filled out the form and I just had a conversation with her last week. And you're gonna find that when you do something like this, um, going back to product like growth and you use something like intercom, everything kind of combines and you're not just operating in silos anymore. So it's not just chat's the way to go. It's not just uh, email's the way to go. It's not just, um, you know, let's just use intercom. Like we need to combine things together. We need to think about content MVPs, combine everything together. And then our marketing becomes a lot stronger that way. Now, the other thing we can do too, this is really important for us, we actually use it to manage our customers too. So I can look at um, you know, the, the amount of traffic a site's getting, um, so who should we prioritize in terms of serving. Um, we can also look at the running test amount, so that's the important metric for our software. But you can, you can set it up however you want. So with Intercom, we basically log in there, see who's active, see how we can help them, and then that way we get someone that's gonna stay with us longer. So again, if you're managing a membership site, or even e-commerce too, I think e-commerce is fine too, and, and if you're doing SaaS especially, how do you retain people? How do you add the most value? And using Intercom, we're allowed to do that, okay? Um, the last thing, seven, and I have more for you guys, but I'm, just, I'm gonna keep it at seven because we gotta eat lunch. So number seven, um, AI for ads, right? People throw around AI, the buzzword, and that's great. But um, from our side, um, our team actually started experimenting with a tool called Pattern 89. And what Pattern 89 allows us to do is it's AI for digital ads. Well, what does that mean exactly? So across the board for them, generally, they're getting a 21 performance uh, increase on average, and it's automated, right? So you guys can look at the screenshot later, but um, I'm gonna try to pick it up. It's saying, hey, you know, um, we're noticing that um, you know, if you add like you on your to your ads, um, maybe you get like a 21% lift. Would you like to do that? So all the recommendations come in here, and you can actually just click on it and start to implement these recommendations. And um, on our side, at least, and uh, Jeff, I can't find Jeff, but um, I think we're at about a 9% improvement rate um, per week. And we're using this on a company that just IPO'd. Um, it is... I'm just gonna keep the information anonymous on that one. But um, company that just IPO'd, and 9% improvement in minutes per week. Um, 
And basically what we did was we just plugged in pattern 89 to um, the ads that we're using. You can do Facebook, they have Google coming as well. Um, and I think they have other, um, there's another social platform, maybe Instagram. Um, but pattern 89, they, I think their plans start from maybe $1,000 and they have like a 14 day trial. But check out pattern 89. This is the first AI tool that I've seen actually work. Um, and we're probably going to roll it out, probably. Um, Maybe to other clients, we'll see. Um, that's really on my team's decision um, if they want to do that or not. So again, you don't have time for this. Um, I think that's the whole thing. Like we, we talk about all these different tactics. I don't have time for this. Who can we delegate this to? Who can we hire? Um, but at the end of the day, like as long as we figure out a way to make time to do this, compound interest, right? Actually, Sayed just talked about this a second ago. It's compound interest. If you keep focusing on it, if you keep working on it over time, when I look at the single grain blog when I first came into the company, we're only getting three or 4,000 visits a month. And now we're up to 250,000 just overall visits, and it's gonna to continue to grow. As long as we stick with it, I know it's gonna to continue to grow. We have to make adjustments along the way. Sometimes it might be flat, it's gonna to be tough. But the first podcast I did, I've talked about the story a couple of times, growth everywhere, nine downloads a day after the first year, only 30 downloads a day after the second year. And I should have given up because the first year I was doing it, I was actually trying to save single grain. That's when I first got to take it over. And Probably shouldn't have done it, but I stuck with it and, and it started to continue to grow and it started to work. And then one day I was just walking with Bever in, in Beverly Hills with, uh, with Neil because he's fancy. Um, and, you know, he, I was talking about how the podcast is so great. And then all of a sudden he turns to me. He's like, let's do it. Like he thought I was telling him to start a podcast. And I looked at him and I was like, okay. And so that's how marketing school came about. So it's, it's these, if you stick with it, all these uh, serendipitous opportunities pop up. And uh, amazing things start to happen, which is why you see Syed has grown to the way, what, 9 million users across the board. So compound interest, um, well, he who understands it earns it, and he who doesn't, well, pays it. So that is it for my talk. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to get more on the Instagram game, and you can email me as well, eric at singlegrain.com. But uh, thank you so much for your time, and enjoy lunch. <laughs>